Good morning, gang. I have a little surprise for you here for Thursday morning. I have Nate from Garden Like a Viking here, who was down in Chattanooga and decided to stop up here in Sharps Chapel on the way back home to Indiana. If you don't know his YouTube channel, you need to go check him out, and I will tell you exactly why. A lot of you guys ask me all the time a million and one questions about gardening, right? We talk about gardening all the time. I've got some answers, as I tell you all the time. Here's a guy who's got a whole bunch of different answers, because where the, the t uh, tips and tricks that I know, he knows some completely different ones. And so maybe something that he knows has taught me a lot. There's different things I do because of watching his channel. Maybe you might learn something too. You know, I've told you many times, use my carrot box as an example. Okay, I found that from a guy in Scotland. Adapt it, make it work, make it work for yourself. That's what we all do, right? Adapt, overcome, improvise, you know, that sort of stuff. Take a listen. Nate, introduce all yourself. All right, guys. So my name's Nate. I got a channel called Garden Like a Viking. And uh, my mission is to get as many people growing their own food as possible. Because I think that the objective is to decentralize the food production and to bring back the food security to the people. And so in order to do that, we need to... Uh, uh, reawaken the spirit of the ancestral methods and so that's uh, what I like to do there you go all right I want to start with a question here because this one comes up a lot because folks on this channel are from all over the country a lot of them from all over the world okay and as both of us know everything we don't all live in the same climate you're in northern Indiana I'm in eastern Tennessee a little different mm. okay yeah. where do you start if you're if you're a brand new gardener today and you go, you know what, it's spring of 2023 and I want to plant something. What's the very first thing they need to do? <clears throat> okay, the very first thing that we need to do is that we need to focus on the soil because the plant is an expression of the soil. And so uh, we need to focus on the life in the soil. And so in order to do that, we need to ensure that we have rich organic matter into the soil and that we are not using chemical fertilizers and that we are utilizing uh, things that nourish the land instead of deplete it as we use it. And this is important. The soil is primary. And so the first thing that we have to do is we have to see what kind of soil do we have. And then we have to determine what kind of things we want to plant. And once we do that, then we can get to work. And there's all different kinds of methods that we can utilize to get to work. Uh, I have many videos on my channel about that. Okay. So you saw my soil here, which is very clay and rocky. It's like planting in a quarry. And so what I did was a lot of compost, a lot of grass clippings, a lot of uh, shredded up leaves, that sort of stuff, manures. Is there something I should be adding to my soil here just for the basics rather than you know, to, to, to get the basic building block of the soil? Yeah, so there's gonna be uh, two, different, two different ways based upon time frame. So the first thing is if you wanna plant immediately and you have rocky clay-like soil, then you, you wanna uh, consider raised beds of some kind or uh, growing pots of some kind, something where you're not gonna necessarily utilize the native soil, okay? But then there's the slightly longer term where you can utilize the native soil, uh, but it will require some conditioning, some organic matter and some uh, microorganisms. So what I like to recommend to people is to uh, assess the area that you wanna grow, and then you can create a semi-raised bed. And so even with the soil here, even if it's not ideal to plant right into, still we can utilize it so we can make a raised bed that is only six inches tall give or take uh, and then we leave the bottom open so that the plant roots can get started in the six inches of good quality compost uh, like what i see that you've made over there very good quality stuff some manures you said and some uh, some compost and some, maybe some leaf molds organic matter that's broken down we're going to put six inches of that and then we let the plant spread its roots out into the earth below that. And as we do that, that's gonna make it more uh, enriched with nutrients. Okay. One of the things that I talk to people a lot about and they ask me about is my, if you use the term, organic fertilizers. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Coffee grounds, eggshells, chicken bones, the, the whole concoction that I made, that spreadsheet that I sent a whole bunch of you guys out to. That, that's what I know from growing up from my grandparents, what they used in Eastern Europe, okay? I know you are a big proponent of Judam, which is Korean natural, natural, Korean natural farming. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me some of the things that maybe I can improve my growing conditions 
by using some Korean techniques versus some European techniques. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, and, and the ancient techniques are going to focus on soil health because again, that is primary. Everything comes back to the soil. So the first rule is that we do not utilize chemical fertilizers. This is most important because the chemical fertilizers is like an opium to the plants and to the soil because in the natural system, I'll briefly explain, in the natural system, uh, no matter any amount of manure or leaf mold or whatever it is that you put into the soil cannot be directly absorbed by the plant. It all has to pass through the digestive tracts of microorganisms. The bacteria and fungi eat, eat the stuff and then the protozoa and nematodes eat that. It's a complex web and each step along the way, nutrients are unlocked. And so that is how the natural system fertilizes the plants. Whereas the chemical fertilizers totally bypasses that whole system and makes it in a chemical form that goes directly into the plant. And so it starves the soil food web. And so the more chemical fertilizers we use, the more we have to use them because our soil becomes dead and depleted. Some could say this is by design. We don't know, but that's definitely the effect. And so what we want to make sure that we do is utilize homemade stuff, whether it be from the Eastern European type or the Korean type or just things that you know intuitively work uh, based upon some videos that you've watched and some results that you've seen. Those are all going to focus on nourishing the life in the soil. And this is primary. Yes. You, you bring up a really good point is that when you said things that you know to work, I mean, there's number one rule. I think you'll agree with me on this. If it works for you, keep doing it. Okay. Now, I'll also agree with you on the other thing about the chemical fertilizers, but we have a different thought process coming to the same solution. My answer always has been, what happens when there's no Walmart to go get it? Okay, I, I know the sodium content and everything like that, the salt content that you're adding to the soil with the fertilizers, but you're telling us more about the... The biological the, process. The, the, right, the, right, exactly. Happens. Which. I, I don't know it. I don't really have a need. I just need to know it works. Okay, that's in, in a prepper's mentality versus a organic farmer's mentality. I need to know it works, and <laughs> I can get the material when the balloon goes up. So, go and, and, and and the way that we can tell that it works is that we're using the natural systems that have been working for millions of years, and so we look to nature and we mimic nature, and that is the basis of natural farming. And we know that this works because it's been working for countless amount of time. See, the one thing the one thing I really like about watching your videos is you're not telling everybody to go to the store and go buy something. That, you, know, you guys know how that drives me nuts. Go to my store, buy this. No, okay. It's everything Nate's telling us is, is using the same waste material, if you will, that I'm trying to use. He's just using different ones in different ways that are really cool to learn about how to do it. because I don't know about you guys, but if I get six peppers off pepper plants, I want to know how I can get eight next year. Okay, that's the thing because that's just more food I can put away that didn't cost me anything. And if I get eight plants, eight peppers instead of six, it didn't cost me any more work either. So I'll ask you this question because obviously you know more about this than I do. What are the most common questions you get about gardening? Yeah, okay. The most common questions, the most common question that I get is what is the things that I should grow? And, and that is the number one question. And then uh, what, what is gonna do good in my area? Okay, so, so they ask me these questions, but that's really, really, uh, it's hard to tell because it's hard to give a blanket statement for that. You have to look at your area based upon your days of free frost, of frost free days. And uh, because we're down here in Tennessee, it's gonna be very different than Northern Indiana. Okay, uh, and then you have to uh, focus on uh, what do you wanna grow? And, and that's gonna be important. You wanna grow the calorie crops. This is going to be primary. So for your audience, you're going to want to focus on things that are giving you sustenance. And this is most important because so many people focus on what I call this rabbit food. And they're growing eight different kinds of lettuce and then a kale and then a spinach. And all of that is really great. But uh, that's not going to sustain your life. That's not going to give you sustenance. There's only one thing and that's calories. And so uh, my primary advice is to focus on things that is going to give you calories. That's going to be the potatoes, the sweet potatoes, the, the beans, the dry beans, the green beans, the peas, um, the winter squash. All of those kind of things are going to give you the nourishment. So focus on those first. What about like root vegetables like turnips, parsnips, beets, carrots, that sort of stuff? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, those are right up there. I just forgot to mention them. But beets, carrots, <laughs> turnips, absolutely. That's why I ask. I want to learn. Yep, that, so. that, that's right. Okay. Because this is a prepper channel and not a gardening channel, 
what would you advise, besides what you already have, somebody who has the mindset such as I do, to do in their gardening to take it to the next level? Okay, I mean, and I mean, everybody can always say, build a bigger garden or diversify your crops or something like that. What What would be the one thing from somebody that knows gardening inside and out that you could tell people that will increase their productivity without increasing their workload mm -hmm. yeah very good very good question uh, so there's going to be a number of things uh, number one is that you're going to want to um, maximize the fertility of the soil and so that's going to give you the biggest yield for the given space now uh, yield is important only if we're growing things that we are going to consume so we want to make sure that we're growing what we're going to consume <laughs> and then we want to make sure that we have a way to store these things Okay, so it's great if you're growing tomatoes, but if you don't know how to store them or can them or ferment them, then it's not going to do you a lot of good. And so uh, one of the primary things is focus on what you know that you will eat, the calorie containing crops you know that you will eat, and then learn how to store them. Guys, potatoes can store all winter long without any refrigeration. They can just stay in the basement it, uh, with a couple special techniques. I've made videos on this. Uh, also, winter squash, they can store in the basement, no refrigeration. Uh, um, Sweet potatoes, I have some that are two years old without refrigeration and they stay perfectly good. So this is what we wanna focus on, especially your audience would wanna focus on this stuff. Uh, second thing, or third thing is, uh, use what you have on hand. This is the key, is to utilize in order to enrich the soil and to uh, increase your bounty, you want to utilize what you have on hand. So some places is gonna be very different. Some places like here, there might be a lot of cow manure is very abundant. Uh, uh, some places it's going to be deciduous leaf mold. That's going to be very abundant. So there's techniques for all this stuff so that we don't got to depend on the stores anymore. And this is primary. You can make it all yourself. Which is important because we've all eaten that red ball that's tasteless that they call a tomato in the store. And if you've grown your own tomatoes, I don't care if you had one tomato on a plant, it tasted better than anything that you ever had in the store, I guarantee it. Nate, I want to thank you for stopping by Tennessee real quick. Uh, let them know where to find you here real quick. Yeah, guys, I'm on YouTube, Instagram, uh, and you can check it out, Garden Like a Viking. And I got videos. Uh, check out the homemade fertilizer videos. Check out uh, every Saturday at 12 noon Eastern time. I do a live q and You'll find so you, me there. <laughs> yeah, so you guys can check it out. If you have any questions, you can let me know. I try to be very responsive in the comments because I appreciate you guys. So. All right, sir. Thank you much. Thank you. And as for that... Involve out.